Hello, this is Matt Willis from CampFridge.com. Uh, I'm here today to show you how I install a uh, 2652 and also uh, 2852 is the larger version of these. This basically is one that I just got done with right here. Um, here is one that I did for, uh, for the customers that I, I put in here. It actually was rebuilt before by uh, some other rebuilder and when I, I pulled the coolant out of this, uh, it had no rust inhibitor. In fact, it was the, the coolant was clear, uh, minus some iron filings. By the way, uh, contrary to what Roger Ford says, uh, if they've been rebuilt before and they're not fresh out of the factory when they fail, and the person chooses by not having it around, can't get it, but the rebuilder, if they don't use uh, rust inhibitor in these things, uh, they'll last three to seven years and for no reason not running off level not losing pressure uh, they will die and the reason for that is is the the corrosion inside what it does is it it is so fine it actually floats around in the liquid and it will deposit into the tubes and cause blockages and these things are rare to have blockages in fact the only time that I've actually seen them get blockages besides that is when they ran dry okay so, I've also got a, uh, an Amish 2652 over here. Uh, it had a failure, actually in the bottom uh, tube, just below the boiler, not where uh, the ones that the, uh, that the Dometics and Norcolds fell at, but actually where they weld the bottom boiler on. Uh, so, it was, um, I guess they, they told the gentleman not to send it back and uh, scrapped it. So, I guess they gave him a new one, or the warranty ran out. I have no idea. Either way, I ended up with it, and uh, so there's a, the Amish unit right there. None of us are infallible, you know, um, we're all human. Anyway, uh, let's go through a few things here. First of all, uh, what you get with some of these rebuilders and what uh, the Amish have been saying, I don't know if they still send this out, but this, this DAPEX foam that they put in here, uh, if you notice, that's this white stuff right here, okay? Uh, the DAPEX foam, is an open cell foam. It's actually a latex foam. Cleans up great with water. It even says it there. Easy water cleanup. Okay, won't over expand. That, the over expand part's really good because you know when you install these things you really don't have a, a lot of space so that's great. Uh, the cleanup with water kind of worries me. Okay, well this is what I use here. I actually use the great stuff and I use the one in the blue can because it actually expands minimal. Um, this stuff right here uh, they're both about the same price. You can get them at places like Home Depot, both of them. The difference is, is this is a closed cell, okay? A closed cell foam will not allow water uh, to come in. Uh, and basically, when it dries, uh, it's, it's pretty well um, waterproof. That, by the way, the uh, urethane foam, two-part that we use on these units, it's also closed cell, uh, 95, 97%, okay? Um, you can see this one because this was previously in here and I used um, this uh, great stuff on here. Uh, you know, it, it, when you, let me put it this way. When you put that stuff on and after it dries and you close your freezer, uh, you can hear the hiss in it because the airtight is so great. A little harder on the, um, the fridge section. This is on the 2652s, 2852s and they're, their counterpart models, 3862, 3662, etc. Um, okay, so it does, contrary uh, to what Roger Ford says, uh, by having to go inside the um, uh, the original cabinet, laying it down on the ground, uh, putting plastic in it, and and actually doing uh, each individual cooling unit and matching it up. That's great if you don't have uh, molds. If you do have molds, uh, you know, you can easily do it outside the mold, uh, save the mess inside the, uh, the RV, or if you pull the fridge out, you know, outside. Um, you know, so you can use this great stuff. Now, uh, using great stuff, okay, without having some sort of release, uh, basically, you can weld the inside of your, um, uh, your cooling unit to the cabinet, and if you ever have to get it out, uh, you've basically ruined your cabinet to, uh, to get it out. So let me go inside the rig here and I'll show you 
What I actually did here, and if you can see it, um, I actually used uh, duct tape is what I used. Okay, I put duct tape on here all the way, had a little lip sanding here, uh, put this in right here. If you notice uh, where the lines are for the, uh, the coils, you know, all the way up to this point, you know, it's a little bit there, but that's not going to matter. All the way up to this point is, um, is duct tape. Okay. And then I put some uh, cold tape, some of that thick stuff right here on this side and on the bottom. And actually, uh, this uh, fins right here, I actually put new uh, double-sided tape on here. If this was one of the older uh, Dometics, then I would actually use uh, a weather stripping foam. Also, they come in open and closed cell. Make sure you get the closed cell for it. And I put it on here. Um, what happens with this stuff, when you go to put this on, a lot of the times you'll have the little film, the releasing that they put on here uh, when they actually did it from the factory because obviously they foam these inside. Um, a footnote to that, uh, I've gotten two 2010 uh, Dometics that they actually foam the cooling unit just like Norcold has done since I think they've been in business. They actually do also foam uh, their cooling units outside and put them in after okay. They do, they do not film them inside The thing about that is the great thing about that is is that um, you know For us you don't have the mess. Okay um, And everybody's been happy with their nor colds up until they've failed Yeah, you know, I've never heard anybody say I don't like my nor cold as long as it gets cold Okay, so this is what I do. However that that releasing agent here sometimes it's hard to get this stuff to stick. So what I do is I use the 3M uh, contact adhesive and you know I spray it on here lightly around and uh, you know let it get tacky and then I put this on and this stuff stays on great. Now the problem okay say you ever have to pull this thing out. Uh, if you ever have to pull this thing out and put it back in the the film that's on this tape that allows it not to stick to itself okay uh, you've just taken it off. And in that case, you can just take some simple uh, turtle wax, car turtle wax. I use it all the time for releasing agent for my molds because actually uh, I have half my molds are fiberglass. The other half I've made out of steel. Um, and I just want the steel ones. I use turtle wax, polish them up, uh, buff them out. And the um, they actually come out really easy and they're really tight. And I can actually pack more in. Uh, into them than uh, my fiberglass winch, which will bow out a little bit. I'm a, I'm a steel man. I'm not the best on fiberglass molds. Anyway, so what I do is I put that on here to give it a little polish for the second time and presto changeo. I actually have uh, these things where they can actually release again just as easy as the first one did. Uh, you can go through that. If you don't want to use the turtle wax, you can actually just reduct tape over it and start over again. Okay. Now, something else I wanted to show you on these plates here, this bottom area right here on the inside, something I don't, I don't see one video telling you this, and this is very important because it really bothers me, and you're going to like this, okay? On the other side of this, this double-sided tape that the, that the factory uses, it's really good. I mean, really, really good, okay? So the majority of these that you pull out, um, they don't do a really good job on putting their... their I, I think it's like a silicone grease on here or a Teflon grease. Uh, and what happens is, is your, uh, your cooling unit, okay, will actually uh, grab onto the, to your fin plate and it will actually pull it out. When it does, it will tear here on both sides on here and it will look ugly. Now, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, okay, well, you know what, you did it and basically you have nobody to blame but yourself. Uh, and the people who did not give you the instruction video. If you are a repairman doing this stuff for a living and you have a real anal uh, customer, you know, he may ask for, you know, a negotiation on your, uh, your fee for doing this. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to actually show you how to take care of that problem. Okay, here we go again. Come on back and out here. And right here is a set of fins. Now, ironically, this is not a set of fins out of a... Uh, one of these units, it's one, I've got tons of uh, cooling fins from like 2807s, 01s, and uh, stuff like that, even 2820s. So they have the three holes in here, okay? Um, what I do is I will actually take this screwdriver that I bent. You can bend a piece of steel, 
uh, butter knife or, you know, use your imagination. And what I do is I'll actually stick it in here very carefully, okay, and I will pull this down and I will slowly start working it until it separates the double-sided tape on here, okay, from the inside. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit. If you, if you pull it up this way, you can actually, you know, punch a hole in it. So, you know what? It takes a little bit, but it will actually separate this. And what you can do, uh, if it's laying down, after you do this, you better make sure it's completely done. If not, when you lay it down to pull it off, I never lay mine down, by the way. Um, when you lay it down to pull it off, you will not know until you see uh, the plastic all tore down there at the bottom. And then you're having to... Uh, use some silicone or, you know, double-sided tape or whatever to fix it, you know? Uh, just, you know, just a little helping hand thing there for you. Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, the when you talk about doing these things individually, uh, say you're going to get into the business of uh, rebuilding cooling units, okay? That's a whole nother uh, conversation and videotape I'd like to do because, man, I can tell you some stories, okay? There's a little thing going on between uh, uh, Roger Ford and me. He keeps saying, you only got six years, seven years experience, Matt. I've got 35. Well, you know, uh, we can have a little discussion about that. Um, yeah, but I've had many people uh, give me advice and training. I didn't just stop at one. And like I told you before, uh, one of your students actually gave me all the equipment, your books, and everything, and believe me, I thought I was getting a treasure trove of stuff, and uh, I found out that I had already surpassed that uh, that course that you have there, um, you know, so we got to talk about that, you know, it's one, one of my videos is going to actually be, do you want to rebuild uh, cooling units, or uh, like my friends, do you want to be an RV tech, by the way, uh, between me and the fence post, uh, there's a property out there, you know, nice view uh between you me and the fence post uh being a tech dollar for dollar they make more money than me okay anybody who tells you these things are fast to do uh and they're gonna make a lot of money off of them they got something else to say urethane foam okay two-part urethane foam that we use is very very temperature sensitive okay if you uh do it when it's cold say you do it at 50 degrees 60 degrees uh and you do it it won't expand as much and it will actually become chalky and it will absorb water. If you, uh, if you do it too hot, like 80 and above, okay, this is what's going to happen to you, okay? Now, I don't know if you can see it, but this is concaved in, okay? This was not because of the sun. This thing's actually been out in the sun, so it kind of darkened. But I've got some that are many, uh, many years older than this one. But this will collapse, and when it collapses... I don't care what type of foam you've got, it will separate from the back wall and it will cause air leaks in here, okay? So for all you guys that's learning how to uh, foam, uh, sweet spot for me is 65 to 75 and I like to keep it around 70 degrees. You always have the, the right amount of expansion and you do not have a problem with that, okay? So we've all been there with this and believe me, uh, the hotter it gets, the faster that stuff starts blowing up. It's, it goes really fast. So um, with that said, you know, this is what we do. Okay, what I'm going to actually do with this is I'll take this right here uh, to get back on this. And by the way, the reason I'm able to run these things like this is because I actually have a hydraulic lift. Compliments of our buddies at Harbor Freight. Okay, and um, I actually changed the wheels to a blue wheel and they'll leave a chalky substance on the floor. It wipes up with just a damp cloth. It doesn't stick, it doesn't mar, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we will actually, and I'm gonna clean this up because I gotta, this is a one-man band for me. I do this by myself. But all I'm gonna do is this amount right here, okay? And you can put this stuff up, going up here, like this. That's it, right there. You can do a little more than that. Uh, depends on how tight it is. I already put this in. Uh, it's tighter. You can, if you do too much and it squashes against the wall, okay, if you get past this point right here, you can stick it, but it doesn't take much. You can see this. And it seals airtight. Air airtight. Okay. Um, the one thing I would hate to do is I would hate to lay this fridge down on the floor in here, okay, um, and do all this work 
inside a rig. Before, uh, before I started making molds, that's exactly how I did it. Okay, I would take the unit out there, the pour foam. This polyurethane um, uh, two-part foam, okay, it's basically glue. And which leads me to the other thing. When you put this in, do it real gentle. Because if you don't, you know, you can blow that stuff out, you know, and this stuff's bad. You want to use WD-40 on your hands or anything else. As it's liquid, it'll come off. You won't even see that it was ever there. Uh, you know, great. WD-40 is great for everything. Uh, otherwise than that, it's acetone, you know. You can use Dapex and use water. Uh, I've got another little video where I've made balls. It, it, it actually takes two days for this stuff to fully dry so that I could demonstrate uh, using this versus the other as far as you, you're going to be amazed at how much water that stuff picks up in three minutes time. Um, well, I guess that's about it. Uh, this is Matt Willis with uh, CampFridge.com. My first video, it's a long one, uh, but I hope uh, you've been informed. If you have any questions, I love answering questions about this stuff. And uh, I love my view here. Uh, this is Southern California, actually. Also, uh, another little note, if, you're, uh, if you are going to train to be an RV tech, uh, don't think you're going to be able to do it in your garage. Uh, if you've ever been around ammonia, uh, go to eBay and get a couple of uh, those ammonia smelling salts that they use to wake up people when they've passed out. Uh, that'll give you a little whiff of what ammonia is like. Your neighbors will not like it if uh, a nice little plume of ammonia comes over and meets them. You'll be getting a knock on your door. Anyway, have a beautiful day. And uh, like I always say, happy camping, campers.